Hi, everyone. This is Yaro Stark. Welcome to another Entrepreneur's Journey podcast. Uh, we're doing a video today, and uh, my guest is Tyrone Shum, who I've been in touch with quite a lot in the last, I guess, what, 18 months would be about right, I'd say, Tyrone. So uh, I think the first memory I have of Tyrone is this very well-dressed, uh, in a nice suit, uh, man coming up to me in uh, Sydney when I was talking at a, a Grants event, and, and you just came up, and, and you were very polite. And uh, I was, I guess, impressed because you certainly, you, you, you seemed enthusiastic, but you weren't over the top about the way you were approaching me. So, but obviously, Tyrone, there's a huge backstory to what you do. I know you're making, uh, you know, a six-figure living online, and I'd love to learn more about how you do that. And hopefully, we can um, inspire and teach some of the people uh, listening or watching this call and, and uh, learn what you do. So, thank you for joining me on the call. Sure. Well, thanks very much for inviting me on the call. It's excellent to be able to come on and share to, if with everyone what I currently do. I, I guess firstly, the, the first thing is just to say thank you to you, Yara, because you've done quite a lot in my business because you've impacted me greatly with everything that we've done or that I've done so far, you know, taking up all the information that you provided for blogging, things about the membership site Mastermind, and pretty much uh, learning so much just from your blog particularly from the affiliate side of things as well too. So it's all I've done is just take an action. <laughs> that's all I can say. Well, that's so. awesome. So now I know you're into outsourcing is sort of the biggest claim to fame, but I'm kind of curious, like what's the backstory? And I'm, I'm assuming that's not all you do. You obviously have to have a business that you use the outsourcing for, but let's, let's go back in time a bit first. Um, you're in Sydney, I presume. Yep. Did you uh, go to university there or what's, what's the story? Okay. Well, do you want the long story or the short story? <laughs> uh, I, I, if it's going too long, I'll stop you, but you try the long version. All right. Well, I'll, I'll go through it. Where I started was I was born and raised in Sydney. I've been a Sydney boy pretty much all my life. Done a bit of traveling all around the world as well, too, a few different countries. But uh, I went to, I was born in, into a middle class family, so my parents sent me to a private school pretty much all the way through until university. And I studied computer science at UNSW, which is University of New South Wales. From there, I was really, really struggling to find out where I wanted to go in my life because I didn't know what to do. I thought, oh, I've been interested in computing. I've, I like that kind of stuff. I love putting things together and uh, building things. But I didn't realize when I started computer science at uni, I didn't realize all that programming. So it turned me off a little bit there. And then I realized, oh, this is not for me. So my story pretty much delved into finding and doing a little bit of soul searching to find out where I wanted to be. And I thought, I'm not really good at anything in particular. I'm not like a computer <laughs> geek. I'm not really a salesperson. I'm, I'm sort of just a generalist. And what I learned more about myself over that period of time was that I could actually leverage a lot of things that I do in my life. And it wasn't back then that I started outsourcing, but it was at that point in time that I read Rich Dad Poor Dad. And I think a lot of people came across that book. When I first delved into that, I thought, wow, this I didn't realize you can make passive income. You can make income without having to work or go to a nine-to-five job. So I started looking at different options and, and started my first business there, which was a vending machine business. Uh, and, how old were you then? Uh, 20, 21. <laughs> okay, so you hadn't had a full-time job at this no, point? No, at uh, that time. I had, I had, I'd just been doing uni and just studying all, all that time. Okay, so a vending machine business, that's, that's cool. How'd it go? It was good. It was good. I, I did made a, a few grand a month and I was pretty happy with that. And then I got a bit bored of it because with me, <laughs> I can never stay in something for long enough unless it really, really is driving uh, me further. I'm just curious though, with a vending machine business and you're making two grand a month, I'm assuming that's fairly passive, right? Because you just put these vending machines, their, their food or drinks uh, in certain locations around Sydney and then you just have to fill them up. Is that, that's pretty much your job, right? It's supposed to be, but it was a lot more <laughs> work than I expected because I had to make sure and go and check that sometimes there was problems with the vending machines. I had to fill up the coins, get all the coins out, and then afterwards you have to take the coins back to the bank and bank it. It's not as easy as the internet where you hopefully you sell something and something just gets straight back into your bank account. So with vending machines, I, I got a little bit... In many ways, it was also tiring, but also at the same time, it was passive in some ways. So I, I basically sold that machine business and then moved on to doing other things. At that point in time, I, I didn't really know exactly what I was, was doing as well too. So I thought, mm, after reading Rich Dad Poor Dad again and said to myself, look, I need to pick up some skills because I wanted to start to learn how to grow a business or start a business up. So I thought probably the best place for me to get into was to get into a full-time job to pick up some skills. And I first started in real estate. 
which was a, a great experience because I picked up a lot of sales skills. I also learned a lot more about how a, a proper business runs as well because within the real estate business, you sort of, you've got your own uh, shelter with the, the real estate agent where they allow you to do the things that you want to do in terms of sales of the real estate. But at the same time, you are sort of running your own little business within the real estate uh, company. Mm -hmm. So from that experience, I learned how to build a list of, of clients all in the area. I also learned how to become a better sales agent by being a, a better salesperson. I, I just learned so much by doing that. And I would stayed in there for about two and a half years before I decided to move out and I took up something else in terms of recruitment. But prior to then, all that time was just basically for me to build up experience as a sales agent and to pick up the skills to learn how to do business. Then after doing all that, I decided I wanted to start running my own own business. And that's how I jumped across and started my own internet-based business, which was selling Dragon Boat products. And at that same time, I was actually also in the Dragon Boating uh, sport itself because what I was doing was I, I was doing Dragon Boating pretty much as a full-time sport. Not When I say full-time sport, I was training three times a week and I was competing also on, on the weekends as well. So for me, considering that was a full-time sport, I, I took that up seriously. But there was a huge, huge missing component in the market, which was selling of equipment. No one in Australia, particularly in Sydney, was selling Dragon Boat equipment the way that we wanted uh, to. Let me just stop you there. Yeah. For people who don't know what a Dragon Boat is, um, I, I've got a cousin who does this or did do it in university so I, or in school, so I, I know what it is. But people listening may not be familiar. What exactly is Dragon Boating? Dragon boating is where 20 people in a boat sit together and just row down the river. <laughs> a sim simple terms, but th there's a lot more technical side to that. But uh, if you could just imagine Chinese New Year, we have it down in Darling Harbour every year. And you'll see all these people drumming away on these boats and also paddling around down these boats. And all these dragons out just doing all these funny, you know, bang, bang, sh right all that there. kind of stuff. And basically, uh, those dragon boats, uh, there's about... Usually, you've got about five or six racing down a river, all co competing against each other. And there's a huge market for people to buy just that dragon boat and also the dragon boat paddles itself. And that's really? the way I delved into. <clears throat> How much does a dragon boat cost? <sighs> Ten grand. Wow, people just buy them like that. Yeah, people wow. buy them. Okay. Uh, particularly, the, it's, a, it's the clubs that we all target. And there's no, numerous clubs all across Australia. So that's the reason why there's a huge market for it. And then you add the accessories on, such as the paddles, the shorts, the t shirts. Wow jewelry line everything it just adds up and it becomes a nice big niche to be able to target and if you can become the leader in that which is what happened we became the number one dragon boat provider all across australia it's a nice profit margin there and <laughs> to generate a six-figure business was, sorry was this online or was this this, um... this was all done online i had uh, the website dbv.com.au you can still go and check it out it's still there but i've, I've sold it as well to, okay. to move on and that, that was my first real online internet-based business where I made a six-figure income. And that's where things also took off for me because that's how I also discovered outsourcing as well. So I've sort of jumped a little bit just to give you a story. Over okay. There. So this um, Dragon Ball business was, out, was um, like an e-commerce business, right? So you were buying product at wholesale, you had an online shopping cart, and you were then selling at retail, and you just were getting the, the, the small niche community of Dragon Ball people in Australia. So. That's, that's pretty cool, and you're into it too, so that's, that makes it, I guess... Yeah, uh, I guess it really did help because I did compete internationally as well and also nationally in the Australian uh, Dragon Boat Championships as well. So I did have a lot of contacts, which did help a lot and also leverage that side of things. But you have to be passionate about it, and I found that being passionate about it, it's easier to make sales too. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, so that's awesome. So you went from university where you weren't really a specialist and not really enjoying it to a vending machine business was your first business then you started a full-time job in real estate which then led you to a dragon boat online business so how old are you now at this point well I think where I'm at now is I, I've sold the dragon boat business I've just been sort of hanging out and just chilling out a little bit more taking a little bit more taking life a lot easier than, than before but at the same time I've been building up my blog and also building up my membership site and also been doing a lot of affiliate commission affiliate promotions as well okay. which is how I generate so, my income what what was the age that you sold the um, dragon boat business how old were you it was only last year so 20 27 okay so we're almost caught up then so why? I mean, I guess lots of people are going to ask if you're making six figures from a, a fairly good business. Why did you decide to sell it? Got bored. <laughs> well, you get you seem to get bored pretty easily, Tyrone. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I'm, I'm the type of person who needs to keep find new projects to do. And that's the reason why it's crucial for somebody like me to outsource a lot of my work because I can't stay consistent. I can start something. I'm an entrepreneur who knows what I want to do in terms of the project. But when it comes to doing the work, <laughs> I find that I struggle a little bit. So that's why I, I, I really, really rely heavily on people who, who also manage my business for me and, and they're fantastic people who I have. Okay. So uh, let's dive into them with the outsourcing. Now, you obviously were doing some for the Dragon Ball business mm. and then you decided that's perhaps a niche I'd also like to become an expert in as uh, you know, my branding online. Is that what happened there? Is that yeah, that's exactly what happened. What happened was I, I started off with um, doing a lot of work myself in the Dragon Boat business. I was working about 60 hours a week just to get everything, you know, clocking through. And as you probably know, when you first start a business, you do put a lot of hours into it. And also to try and get it to where it want to be, you need to also leverage your time as quick as possible. So I read Tim Ferriss's book and what happened there, it changed my perspective on everything. I realized, wow, I was actually hiring someone here in Sydney to be able to help me pack and dispatch and also manage a lot of the sales side of things for Dragon Fighting. But I realized there's a lot more potential to be able to leverage and say, outsource my stuff overseas. Like all the web development could be done overseas, the customer support could be done overseas, all those kind of things at, at a fraction of the cost as well, which is something that I, I've been trying to explain to people is that it's a, a very, very good way to be able to leverage your business very quickly and also grow it very quickly if you've been able to use the time and resources that you can outsource overseas to and to find the expertise because I don't have everything. I don't know how to always set up a website. I don't know how to manage customer support them perfectly, but you know, I've got great people who, who back me back up behind me. So anyway, after, re after reading Tim Ferriss's 4-Hour Workweek, which I think a lot of people may have heard or, or seen as well, I got inspired to look at how to be able to leverage and systemize the Dragon Boat business. And that's what I did. I took off about, it was about a week it took me just to sit down and write all the strategies out, all the training material out, and then just outsource it. And by then, it took me about three or four months or so to get it to up to speed so that I could just step away and just do something else, which is what I did. And I thought, all right, well, you know, it's, it's doing what I enjoy and uh, I'm making money from it. Um, and the whole business turned really well. So from there, I decided it's time for me to maybe teach other people because people were asking me exactly the same thing. How did you do it? And I said, hmm, all right, well, I'll tell you. And then after a while, I got sick of telling people, so I created the course, which is Mass Outsource Mastermind, and started teaching people exactly step-by-step -step on how I did it. Um, and at that same time, I had an interest to buy who wanted to buy a business. I said, all right, well, why not? <laughs> Sell the business, take the cash, buy a property, and you know, move to somewhere else. So that's what I did. And, and I just recently settled on, on my property, or exchange, sorry, on, on a new property that I'm going to be moving on in about a few weeks' time. So the cash that I, I chained or sold my business on was able to buy me something else, which was just to move on to yeah, different and better things. Yeah, it was, it's a very similar story to me. I mean, I've done the same, same thing with selling a business and then you know, taking the capital and reinvesting it and then selling another business. And hopefully each time you do that, you're selling a bigger business so you're making more capital. So exactly. well, I'm, I'm kind of curious now, let's, let's just finish your story so put people in perspective. So you, you launched um, Mass Outsource Mastermind. Um, I think if people are subscribing to me, they'll, they'll know I, I, I've emailed out and blogged a couple of times about your stuff. So you've been teaching people how to do outsourcing for what the last, I guess, year now would be? Probably wouldn't be a year. It's probably just about seven to nine months, I think, if I remember, because we only launched it last year, about November. Um, and then since then, the course has been, yeah, the course has been running over that period of time. So I think it's officially, it's only been running for about six months because I just finished teaching all my students. And then okay. the next batch should be coming out pretty soon as well too. But uh, yeah, it hasn't been very, very long. So, and your focus is predominantly now, in, in terms of what you're doing day to day, is teaching people outsourcing. That's what you, or, or do you have any other projects? Being, um, you know, easily distracted as you are. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you know, we're setting up a membership site. Once you finish your training, you can either improve on the course, which is what I've done as well, and or release a new version on version two, which will probably come out later during the year, 
or to start up new projects. So for me, at the moment, I'm just happy to just focus on, on teaching my students and to give them more value and provide more things. But at the same time, on the side, I've, I've been building up my blog. I've started a, a new, sort of new, say, blog at tyronshum.com. And at that blog, I've also been doing a lot of uh, affiliate promotions and all those kind of things just to generate a side income as well, too. And that's been going exceptionally well. And what I've not noticed in terms of the strategy that I've been doing lately is to complement everything that I do. So, for example, if I've got a affiliate promotion coming up for another person, I'd throw in a few of my course bonuses into that to be able to entice people to be able to look at and, and choose purchasing the course through my link than, than other people's. And that, that strategy has worked really, really well and a lot of commissions have been coming in as well too. Okay. So, yeah, that's what's been happening as well. Okay, so basically you're, you're almost like an internet marketer at the moment with affiliate commissions, uh, your own membership site, and your own blog. You know, it's a great model. It's the one I teach. But I think what I'd like to do now is take this interview um, just in a slightly different direction. Now, you're obviously a, a, a successful serial entrepreneur, <clears throat> excuse me, which means you've started at least three businesses there that we've talked about in this interview that have all worked to a degree. And obviously you've had to do different types of work as you go along. And you know, each business, since you've been leveraging the success of the previous business, has meant you've had you know, more knowledge. You've been able to get more out of what you do personally by getting other people to help you. But can you take us back in time or even, you know, even look at each individual business since you started them from scratch? For people listening to this, we're thinking, OK, Tyrone's done this three times. He's, each time he's come up with a profitable business. I'm, I want to do the same thing, but I haven't had one yet. So I don't have cash flow. I don't have capital. Um, I've, still, I've pretty much got my time as my only uh, leverageable asset. You know, how would you, to, you know, speak to these people and what would you recommend they do? Okay. Well, let me just take a step back as well first. I'll be honest with you, not every business that I've done has been successful. So I've failed many times and I probably haven't shared that with you. You know, there's still <laughs> those little stories which I haven't said, but I'll, I'll tell you, I've lost easily five figures in, in businesses that I've started previously and that's going back oh yeah only probably about two or three years ago when I started those businesses up hoping that that it, it'd be profitable but due to market conditions and things changing I, it hadn't succeeded so honestly not every business I've done you know it's not like I touch gold and I mean touch a business and it turns into but gold it's not like that but since you're talking Tyrone just since you're mentioning them can you just briefly tell us what those businesses were and, and why you think they didn't work just I'm curious so Okay, well, the business that uh, I lost five figures in was basically a, a business that was a larger model than, than I, I had enough resources to do. And we put a lot of capital into it to be able to get started up and, and so forth. But I was trying to put it online, turn it into an online business model instead of being a retail model. That was, I think, my biggest mistake. And it was a toilet business, toilet <laughs> deodorizing business, which was uh, actually, okay. <laughs> actually a, a right, a originated from Canada. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> it's so, extremely successful over there. It's been distributed across thousands and thousands of Walmarts and also retail outlets across there. And it's also taken off quite well in the US. But we try to become, we were the distribu exclusive distributors over here in Australia and trying to bring it in. But it just didn't take off because the price point wasn't right. And secondly, we try to sell it through the internet. And most people want to be able to just walk in a, a retail store like Woolworths or, or Coles and just pick it up and then walk off and use it. Right. So what, what we couldn't get into the market was breaking to those retailers at that point in time. And then, the, you know, when the dollar dropped at about 50, 60, 50, 60 cents, that's when things really, really hurt our margins. So we had to bail out because it just didn't make sense anymore. So that was one of the, the failures that I've had. But learning from that experience is that you've got to look at all the different variables as well. Not only do you look at the world economy, you got to look at also what your resources were. And I think we delved into something that we had absolutely no idea about, hoping that we could turn over a lot of products. But in, in actual fact, you have to really start small at the beginning. And that's what I think my biggest mistake was, was to try and think, start too big too early, when it, you just got to take small baby steps in those side of things. Okay, Tyrone, can I just, I've just, no, there you go, your camera was frozen, but go ahead, keep going. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then, I, in terms of what I learned from business as well, just to start off and do so many different businesses, there was, one thing I noticed is, you can't rely on yourself, you have to be able to find people to, to help you run the business or to grow your business, because 
at the end of the day, if you start up a business up, yes, at the beginning, you'll, you'll have to put a lot of energy and effort into it. But as you grow and you get to that tipping point where the business is expanding to a certain point, you need to find people to help you, whether it be hiring people here locally to be able to run and manage your customer support or, or do whatever you need to do, or hiring people from overseas, which is outsourcing to, to a lower cost and um, leveraging as much as you can. So that was one one principle that I've learned over the past of growing businesses and also being excited about it is, is crucial because I've noticed with more passion and more excitement in the business just coming from myself the business grows much faster because you're really really showing it from to, to people and that's what I highly recommend if you're going to start in, in a business or going to start anything new particularly a product business you want to start in something that you're firstly interested in because it really really helps you grow the business much faster and also really delve into and get it done much quicker. Uh, I think that that's really those the key main points and, and as, as you asked me, how do you start if you've got no capital or no, no uh, cash flow or no time even, I think the main thing is really just to focus because there are so many products out there that you can buy and start off with but the main thing is to be able to find something that you're good at and focus on just doing that. It doesn't necessarily mean that you need capital to do that because from my experience, when I first started the Dragon Boat business, this is just something I, I did when I first started was I didn't have any capital to be able to buy my own paddle. <laughs> I actually, <laughs> I'll tell you this is what I did was I went around to all the different clubs and I said to them, hey, I'm actually going to be importing or uh, contacting this particular supplier with all these paddles and I'd like to get a team order together. If your team is interested in buying, say, 20 or 30, just let me know and I'll put the whole order together and we can bulk buy it together. So that's how I started. I, I said, look, I went, in, went to buy 20 paddles directly from the supplier and from those 20 paddles, that was where I, I put a little bit of margin which covered for the, my first paddle I bought myself. Right. And, uh, <laughs> the business was boring. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that was my first sale. And then from there, everybody heard about it and it just started ordering through me. So it, it just doesn't, you don't need capital. I'm someone who's a true living proof that when you start anything, you don't need capital. And the blogs that I've started, the, the mastermind courses that I've started, it just comes with just time that I, I had to put in because I had to create the courses and stuff like that. And I didn't invest any money into doing all that. So that's an example okay. there. All right, good, very inspiring. Now, uh, let's um, go to what we're doing at the moment. Now, you, like, like we just said before, six months, maybe a little bit longer than that, you've been in this industry. So, you went from the, the Dragon Boat business, it was basically sold. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so you, you had some cash, you bought your property, yeah. but you're basically starting a business from scratch again. But you had some knowledge, you knew about outsourcing, you read the 4-Hour Work Week, you'd done all the outsourcing for an entire business. So, you already had, uh, you know, your skills with um, finding people and, and uh, you know what roles need to fill. Can we maybe break it down step by step? Because uh, well, let's paint a picture here. How much are you making um, per month or on average from your your current business, which is the online business? Just a little over 10k a month. So that's that's averaging right now. And yeah, this month I'm pro pretty much hitting on target. I'm actually a little bit over target right now as we speak. So. So we got a six-figure business. Um, you started that literally six months ago. So you, you went from, from nothing to in six months to a six-figure business. Um, yes, you had some experience, but you had to do a whole lot of things right in order to make that work. So can you take us from, let's say, the day you sat down and said, all right, let's start this outsourcing business and it's my, my next online business and what you did first? Okay. Well, buy Yaris product. That's what I'd say first. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, okay. that's good. But what do you, you do next? Like, what actions did you take besides yeah, okay. giving me some of your money? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, in all seriousness, yes. Uh, first thing is education. I, I did spend a little bit of time educating myself. You know, I went out there and, and tried to find products that, that I liked and I think I could easily take. And what I like about your products at Yaris is that it's all action steps. I could just take the information away and, and implement it. So for me, it's quick to read through information. I just skim through whatever parts I take, I'll just take and then implement them straight away. But to start off with, what I did was firstly sit down and, and write down exactly what is the goal that you want to achieve? What is it that you want to achieve outside of this business? Re relating back to my Mass Outsource Mastermind course, I was thinking to myself, okay, how much did I want to achieve in my business? What was the exact amount that I wanted to, to achieve by the end of, say, six months or so? So the first strategy was to write down the goal, which was the target figure. Then afterwards, I break down all the steps. And this is what I really did. I actually had my booklet here, and I wrote down 
everything step by step what I need to do. So from the start was, if I remember, I had to hire the right programmer firstly to create the website because it required a lot of technology side and I didn't want to spend all my time putting that together. Then the next thing was to go out and find affiliates, finding people who would help me promote and also build those relationships up because it would take at least a month or two to be able to get to know these people who don't even have a clue about and they don't even know who I am. And I've got to prove to them that I can provide a really good product that they would be happy to promote. So I was building up those relationships at the beginning as well. And then the third thing was to start to think, okay, what kind of good content can I put together to give away free content that people would want to be able to look at and go, oh, wow, you know, it's blowing them away that they want to find out a little bit more about my course, which is where it led to creating the 10 free videos and also the ebook. And then on top of that, what I did was I, I thought I'd take it one step further and start interviewing people who have been successful at outsourcing and also who, who have done really, really well. And the people I've interviewed have made over a million dollars just from outsourcing their business and leveraging their time and creating the products and materials. So that's why I first started with that. And that's very much along the same lines as creating a membership site, which is what you teach in your program. But at the same time, I also had a blog, which I had been running as well for probably about six months or so, which is that internet business path. And I'd started building a following as well. And what I learned very, very important was to build relationships with your subscribers because as soon as they get onto your database or subscribe to download your free material, if you've got a free ebook, which I gave away, you want to start from that day one to build a relationship, not to sell anything to them. So for the first five or six emails, you just want to send them good, really solid content. And that's what I did the whole time. And even to today, if you subscribe to my database or my, my list, the, for the first five emails, which I set up automated, it's all very, very good content. It tells you exactly where to find good virtual staff, how to be able to create your system that you want to do and all those kind of things. And I give away a lot of free tools as well, which is available on this internet, but it takes people time to find it. But I've got it all listed out inside the email and they can just take it and use it wherever they want. So I think that's, <laughs> there's a lot, of, a lot of things that I did all at the same time, but I think the most crucial thing is to really establish rapport with subscribers and also to build relationships with key affiliates or key people who are going to help you promote your product down the track. Okay, so you must have known that you wanted to do an information product and that was what you were going to sell and you decided the membership site model or at least an online course was the, the one to go through. Um, I'm assuming that's mostly because you've been through my programs. Now, uh, you, you know, what I guess impresses me most about your story is you literally did come to the market. No, you know, you weren't Tim Ferriss, you weren't uh, a well-known expert at outsourcing. So there's already some established players in that niche. Um, yes, you had done it for uh, your, a business of your own. So you had the, you had the practical experience that you could draw upon as an example and show people what you did. And that's, I'm assuming, you relied on heavily when it came to teaching as well. But you know, ultimately, you were coming into a marketplace that already had some established people. You had no expertise besides six months of blogging about internet business, really. So you know, how were you able to um, convince people and... and I guess, A, rapidly build your email list, B, convince the affiliates you're worth promoting. I mean, it's, uh, you said it, take, it took a month to, to negotiate and have relationships with these people, but you know, no one knew you, so that's, that's still impressive you managed to do that. So, and then, of course, you, you, I'm assuming the next step was to actually do your launch, and, and uh, maybe you could take us through that as well. Yeah, well, I think most people would know yourself, Yara, you build strong relationships with people. As soon as people hop onto your blog, they start reading it and they feel as though they know you. And that's something that I think is key to any business is building those strong relationships with people, whether it be your affiliates, whether it be your subscribers. And what I learned just from sales working in real estate, because you are, I'm selling properties that were close to a million dollars, you had to build those strong relationships with your vendors and, and with your purchasers as well because at the end of the day, they are handing their property to you to sell on their behalf. And that's a skill that I learned and picked up over a per period of years. So I took that straight, same skill into internet marketing or into the internet business and try to build that same relationship. And as I've said, it, it's really, really the key between a successful marketer and a non-successful marketer. And the relationships I build was just to provide really, really good content. And a lot of people have emphasized it over the years many, many times that content is king. And if you can provide really good value, really good content to people, people will just come back to you. And whether or not you had any expertise or, or any, uh, yeah, 
anything that's backing up behind you saying that you're an expert in this area, it doesn't matter. And one thing I did learn from Tim Ferriss was that you don't need to be an expert, you don't need to have a PhD in, in outsourcing, you don't need to be a PhD in, in blocking. As long as you can provide that you can prove that you've done it already before and people see that you're genuine and you're providing really good value and really good content, it's a lot easier to build up rapport because a lot of people take experts for granted and they look at them and they go, okay, yeah, they've done it already before, but they're already making millions of dollars and, and, and all those kind of things. But I would rather deal with someone who is going to be genuine and, and who hasn't started and just give them a fair go and to spend more time because I think a lot of people realize that the big big promoters like Mike Fulsame, Jeff Johnson, Frank Kern, they've got thousands and thousands of people in the database, but it's very hard for them to deal with every single one individually unless you're paying a very, very high price to, to get access to them. So I think that was where my key stepping point in was that I got in at a low price point, but also at the same time, I really spent time, quality time with the members who joined up my site and also the subscribers. And I replied back to as many people as I can because I kept getting emails asking me question after question about how to do this, how to do that. And from there, I think what happened was it helped me leverage the time that I had with people was when I help with one person, they'll tell another person. And then through word of mouth, the word just spread and yeah, a lot of people just keep coming back and asking me questions and helping them and all that kind of stuff. And nowadays, I'm able to consult people and, and charge charge them to consult as well too because they see that I'm an expert now in that field. Okay, so it's a combination of what you'd say, content and really good personalized customer service is, is really the... Yeah, customer service. Key. That's the word I was trying to find. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Okay, awesome. So um, you've... No, well, let's just finish that story of how you did the launch then. So you, you, you created the 10 free videos that showed people how to do outsourcing. You interviewed some experts. You had this series of emails that was already going out on your blog and on your, you know, your outsource uh, mastermind site. So all of this content is going out for free. Um, then you decide to, to launch this product. I'm assuming you sort of followed the typical formula. Was there anything special to talk about there? Or? Uh, the formula was pretty much the same as what you teach in your course. I, I modeled a lot of your successes because becoming a blogger premium was extremely successful and also your membership site mastermind was extremely successful so i modeled a lot of that i used a lot of your templates that you had yeah i noticed that <laughs> <laughs> i have to admit i've never seen someone copy my material so specifically as you did Tyrone. so <laughs> I, I, I kept reading your emails going that sounds a lot like me <laughs> so, i'll be honest with you why would you reinvent the wheel when you've already got the formula in place <laughs> yeah no it's fantastic you took so much action so yeah, yeah. yeah. But I think okay. the, key, the key to a lot of, success, of my success is really taking action because what I found is a lot of people have a lot of energy at the beginning and they do get started. And it's the same thing that I see in my members. <laughs> For probably the first month or so, people really action orientated and they want to take action. I've given them everything. But after a month or so, I noticed that there's a lot of people that do drop off. And what I found is that you need to keep that momentum going. Once you get started, keep that momentum going. And if you do struggle with that like I do, I do help find people to help me. And that's where the key of my success is, is to be able to find the right people, the people who have got really, really good, strong key skills that I need to help me grow the business, whereas I can just sort of just drift off myself yeah. to do other no, things. <laughs> accountability. It's, it's, yeah, you've got people working for you. You have to do work as well, so that's good. Uh, I guess let's wrap it up with a couple of things. Um, so you, you did the launch. Now, I'm assuming the greatest benefit you've seen from this entire process, from launching a, an online course, from doing a proper launch, from getting affiliates, from creating all this content, which obviously took quite a bit of energy to, to create it all, and you mentioned before affiliate income has been a big part of what you do. Um, you're doing consulting as well, so you're you're working with your highest value clients. Um, so you've built up, you have become like an expert in a, in a niche, uh, which has become about pr primarily because you gave away content, and like you said, did great customer service and did a launch. Would you say the greatest benefit though from this entire process would be the um, increase in the size of your email list? Would that probably be it? Most definitely. I. Everything that I, I teach and talk to people about, it's all about your list. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you need to have a big list to be able to succeed in internet marketing. I only actually have a small list, but my quality of the list is very high. And I was actually talking to another internet entrepreneur, his name's Chris Drucker. Um, he's, he's at the Virtual Business Lifestyle uh, channel there. And we are just discussing about how, how we 
generate any income and why it's important to really not just build the quality of your list but also to keep in contact with your list regularly. And my list is, is, is small comparison to all the other lists out there and I focus heavily on just working with those individual people because I know that somewhere along the line inside the list there are going to be people who are willing to, to really spend and, and get the right quality material. If I give them the right content and also provide them with really good customer service, I find that they'll come back to me time and time again. And anything that will incentivize them to be able to come back to me really, really does help. And that's what I found that the strategy seems to work. And you'd be surprised. There's a lot of people in the market who are keen to buy products, um, just whether or not they'd be buying it from you. That's the thing that I've learned from this. And as I said, it doesn't matter how big your list is or how small your list is, it's just focusing on the right people inside your list and just continually keep in contact with them. Not that I flog them every day with emails, <laughs> <laughs> but I, 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 at least every, every second or third day I email back to them and give them something about you. That's what I found. And uh, as you probably know, your list is so important too. So I think that's something that I can only really pass away to everyone. If you are getting started in internet marketing, or any online business, crucial to... Sorry, Tyrone, you just, break, you just broke up a little bit on that. You said every how many days you send to your list? Oh, every, roughly around about two to three days or so, I send uh, quality content back to the list as well. So I just want to mention one last thing. is With my Dragon Boat list, I'll tell you, I, I only had about 500 people on my list. But <laughs> Wow. Yeah, but every single one on average was generating about $350 per, per lead. So you can imagine if I keep getting repeat business from them, it's already generated six-figure income quite easily. Yeah. Okay. So you don't have to have a big list. All right, great stuff. So I think uh, just to highlight the key points here, I like the fact that you obviously started some some businesses in you know offline business. You had a, a, a you sort of transitioned from purely offline to an offline selling online, like you had offline products selling online business. And you use the skills you developed in the, in those two businesses to then launch a uh, an online business teaching selling information, which we all know is, I guess, a goal we a lot of people are looking to, to head towards is selling what you already are good at or selling what you know and packing it up into information products and then becoming someone even just a small expert in a very specific niche. And like Tyrone said, if you can get a very targeted list of buyers or you know make a target list and then slowly find the buyers in there and really nurture them you can do quite well with a, a small list and just following some formulas you know create a great blog create some great free content you give away as, as lead resources you know, do a, a launch and and you're you're kind of done so it's, it's uh, a that's, that's all, the story that's okay all great you really need to do <laughs> yeah. and if everyone wants to find out more about uh, definitely outsourcing uh, what's the website to go to you can check out uh, outsourcing at massoutsource.com and there, when you uh, go to that page, you'll be able to get my 10 free videos. Alternatively, I always update my blog about every two or three days as well too at tyronesharm.com. I'll spell it for you. It's T-Y-R-O-N-E-S-H-U-M.com. And just on there, I usually talk a lot about outsourcing. You'll probably just see me on video again. A lot. A lot my, actually, my whole blog is a video blog now. So, I, okay. <laughs> so if you want anything to to find out about that, I, I go through step by step in video in detail on how to do a lot of things there. So you can check it out anytime. And uh, love to see you get it, guys there too. And and what's the Dragon Ball uh, website? Just so you can check that out as well. Yeah, sure. It's DBV, it's spelled Delta Bravo Victor, or Dragon Boat Ventures. That's what it is. Dot com. Dot au. And okay. uh, I, I don't own that site anymore, but you can check it out and see how the other per person that bought it from me is doing. Yeah, well. <laughs> uh, I'm curious as well. Okay, so tyronechum.com, um, and we've got massoutsource.com and dbv.com.au, the uh, ex business of yours. So, all right, great stuff, Tyrone. Thank you for uh, spending the time and sharing your story. I, I'm really impressed by the fact that you've duplicated so many of the things that I've done and it's worked for you and you're obviously making six figures online now and you've done it much quicker than I did it. You know, I did it in basically in a year, which took me probably up four or five years. So that's really impressive. And uh, yeah, congratulations, man. Keep up the good work. Thanks very much, Yara. And I'll, I'll tell, just want to leave a little note. It doesn't matter how long it takes to, to get to where you want. Just persevere. That's the crucial part about doing anything online. If you don't doesn't see it work, change. Because I know that if you don't change quick enough, you'll fall behind the eight ball. And that's what I've done as quickly as possible. Because I know when things don't work, 
move on to the next thing. I mean, don't, don't get out of it altogether, but just make improvements and, and make change as quick as you can. That's how you can succeed quickly too. So that's something that I wanted to just share and uh, give away as a point too. So I All right, nice ending again. point. Thank you everyone for uh, listening and watching. Uh, keep an eye on Tyrone and uh, hope you enjoyed the podcast. You know where to go if you want to get more of these. It's entrepreneurs-journey.com or just Google my name, Yaro, Y-A-R-O. And uh, you can get lots of great stories like from Tyrone here today. So thank you, everyone. We'll catch you soon. Bye-bye.